having heard all about the biologic endoscopy and the role of NBI, uh, I thought it might be useful now to discuss actually how NBI works. And um, there, there are a few examples. I think the, the more different, the, the more varied the examples, uh, the, the easier it is for us to appreciate how it works. It's actually fairly simple, I think. Um, the person that invented it, I thought, was pretty switched on, or the, the group that invented it, pretty switched on. I don't know why anyone didn't think about it, about it before, but it's a, a great idea. Essentially, you're filtering white light. So white light has all the colours in it, and you're filtering out so that you have the green and the blue there, which is where the peak absorption of haemoglobin is. And so you enhance visualisation of the mucosal and the submucosal microvascular patterns that way, uh, depending on the wavelength. So the, the blue at 415 and the green at 540 corresponding to the peak absorption of haemoglobin. It has a bimodal absorption. And filtering these wavelengths allows penetration of the superficial layers of the mucosa with the capillary network is, as well as some of the more deeper submucosal vessels. And it's quite easy, you just press a button and turn it on. That's uh, essentially how easy it is with Olympus. This is an older video, this is the older 180 series, which is probably obsolete now in most places, but um, I think some hospitals still use it. Oop. And so, you know, essentially you've got the old xenon lamp. Um, I think we're moving more towards LEDs these days. Um, and then that's a broad spectrum. Conventionally, you have quite a, a, a big um, scattering of light. And then you narrow that down with narrow band imaging just to the blue and the green wavelengths, which is where hemoglobin is absorbed the most. And uh, that allows a better, a narrower scattering effect and a better visualization. And this is just one of the first uh, cases I, I looked at with NBI. Um, it does light up things that I think are not so easily visible with white light, and this is a, a um, interesting example. Um, we all have cases like this. Um, so it, it does actually light up areas of trauma as well. Uh, you can see the, um, those larger red spots, like there. Uh, that's where the, um, the, the subglottic jet ventilation, the Hunsaker, uh, cause some abrasions on the way through. But it lights things up nicely, like uh, that area there, that area there. Um, but then, coming back, I thought, well, what about these things? Now, on white light, you know, I could see them if I was slow, but if you're going very fast, you'll miss those. Um, and I thought that was quite a nice little example which light, lit up those papillomas deeper in the airway, which is quite important. Um, papillomas lower in the airway are much, you know, potentially more um, morbid than the higher up ones. So it does light up things quite nicely, things that you may not otherwise see with white light. Um, and this is a little video from Olympus. It's not my video. Uh, it's from Europe. And um, it shows the new, new 4K system. Uh, this is not a 4K monitor, but you can appreciate the, the depth of, of quality of the vision. It's amazing what you can see. Um, and then when you turn NBI on, it's even more amazing the tiny microscopic capillaries that are visible. Um, I think especially in the trachea, those little fine micro capillaries, um, to be able to see that, you almost get a, a, three, almost get a 3D perception of, of the micro vessels more superficial and the deeper submucosal vessels, which is, a, you're allowed to get that because of the, the blue light, which highlights the uh, more superficial ones, and the green light, which highlights the more submucosal ones. So I think that was a very nice demonstration um, of the, uh, the European Olympus uh, video. This next one, I thought this, this was a quite a, another, just a different way of thinking about NBI, uh, all to do with tomato juice. Now, the interesting question is, what does NBI have to do with tomato juice? Well, you all know that white light contains all colors. And if the white light around me hits the surface of the tomato juice, all colors except for red are absorbed. Only red 
is reflected and that's how it reaches your eyes. So, how does NBI now work? Well, NBI uses not white light, but blue and green light. And when blue and green light hits the surface of the tissue, it is highly absorbed by little tiny blood vessels, but reflected by the surrounding tissue. And that's why NBI creates a high contrast between blood vessels and the surrounding tissue. Now, why is this so important? Well, small tumors are often surrounded by a larger number of blood vessels. And that's why NBI can help to detect and analyze these areas. So NBI supports early diagnosis. If you want to learn more, please visit the NBI portal. That was a nice little video. It's quite simple, but it describes how it works. And you notice the blue light is the more superficial and the green light is the slightly deeper submucosal uh, vessels that show up. Now for me, I mean, you can read all the papers you like, you can come to courses like this, but I think the key is when you start using it on your patients. And if you have one or two patients that it makes a very big difference for, that's when it's gonna stick in your mind. And this happened to me a, a couple of years ago. There was one patient, um, this gentleman, he's, he's about 50, 52. He had previously been treated by another ENT specialist, um, a, a very early dysplasia, uh, sent to me for sort of monitoring. And I had a look at him and said, well, you know, it looks pretty good. I'm happy how it looks. And then about six months later, he came in uh, again for assessment. This is about two years ago now. And um, he, do, he has a really strong gag, but, um, I had a look down in my clinic and I, I thought, oh, there's a little bit of uh, redness there, a bit of erythema on the, uh, on the left of screen, the right anterior vocal fold. I tried to get as close as I could. I think with white light, I probably would say, you know, my assessment was, yeah, that's not too bad. We'll just keep an eye on that for another couple of months. I mean, he only had dysplasia initially, no risk factors, um, maybe a bit of reflux, that was it. Anyway, and I thought, well, let's, you know, press the button. It's really easy to do. And hopefully I'll press it very soon. Um, and when I look down with NBI, I get a little glimpse. Not, a, not the best look in the world. And I, I thought I saw some unusual blood vessels light up. And I wasn't entirely happy. The closer I got, I was like, oh, there's some little... Uh, unusual vascular changes there. Um, we need to have a closer look at that. And so I said to him, you know, we could watch this for a while or we could go to the operating room based entirely on NBI. That changed my management for this patient. And he came to theatre and he had, that was actually um, in situ squamous cell carcinoma. We would have picked it up two or three months later, but it would have been that little bit bigger. That means that the treatment would have affected his voice more. And for him, that's really important. He talks on the phone all day. So for this particular patient, I remember him quite well. That was a, a patient experience that changed the way that I practice. And I turn NBI on on every case, even benign cases now, um, because I, it shows things that you may otherwise not, not see. So that's how it works. It's pretty straightforward. And I think it does make a difference to patient care and patient management. And that's a very um, short talk. Thank you. Thank you.